I lived in uh, I lived in Gurgaon for a year. Oh, okay. And okay. um and that was one of one of the places where I just realized the full temperature range of that Extreme. internal that internal uh <laughs> flat plain area yeah. in and around Delhi. So I got cold. I got cold at night in India. If you ask the average Canadian boy, can oh, you yeah, it's a, it's... can you get cold? <laughs> living in <laughs> Delhi, laugh. sleeping at night they were like not possible <laughs> it's it's possible i promise I, you yeah i lived in delhi for 17 years uh, before i moved from i mean agra that's my birthplace the city of taj yeah, so after yeah. after my schooling um, agra has some wonderful um, uh, schools convent schools thanks to the british legacy so about 150 years plus old schools there and right. after after schooling, there weren't any job opportunities or good colleges. So I moved to Delhi, which is, again, a three hour drive from Agra. And that's where I found my job and, and my, my love, my wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so and is, I lived is, there she, for... is, is she a Delhiite also? Yeah, she's a Delhiite, but I'm from Agra. Yeah, like yeah, I said. yeah. So um, but then uh, Gurgaon, we eventually moved to Gurgaon where you where you actually have experienced uh, the weather. <laughs> yeah. So I worked with G for several years, I mean, about two years. And that's what took me to Gurgaon. And then um, I followed uh, Raman Roy, the father of Indian BPO industry. Yeah, yeah he, he hired me at G, Jekis, we used to call it earlier, now called Je Genpact. So like cool. the rats of Pied Piper of Hamlin, we followed, you know, Raman and his leadership. So Spectromine took me to Delhi, uh, the uh, heart of South Delhi. And uh, eventually we got bought over by Wipro. And that because of that acquisition, Kevin, I moved to Pune. I was part of that acquisition. Ah, yeah. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. So, so it Mr. wasn't just some, some. Uh, it wasn't like, you know, you pre you preferred the... Uh, the cuisine or the um no i mean i else. love the weather i love the city it it, <laughs> it is it used to be a lot more greener than what it is right now it used to be a lot more um quieter and it's also called as the oxford of uh, the east because of the universities colleges being so good here and right. um, yeah but i have no 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 complaints at all uh, for moving here and we just fell in love with the city and decided to make it our home so it's been 20 plus years now since i've been here Fantastic. Wow. Well, uh, life is long. It, you know, we get to we get to have a few relationships. Some of those relationships are with a city. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, that's that's great. You know, Pune, Delhi, Agra, some of the greats. Yeah. And, and I'm so blessed to have found Raman in my life. In fact, my book, since we're going to talk about our book, is 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 an ode to Raman. So Raman yeah. actually wrote the, the forward of the book. Also, it's my way of thanking him for what he did to me and to millions of Indians um, by creating so many jobs for us, so many new opportunities for us. GSK India, NIS, Sparta, Genpak, Wipro, Infosys, Cognizant, Infosys again, two two rounds there. And Even two rounds, in, two rounds in Wipro as well. So I'm, I'm a very okay. rare. Yeah, so I left Wipro. Okay, double, for double. Six, double, double, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good stuff. Well, you must have left uh, with a good taste in everybody's mouth if they invited you back. <laughs> and then, and then, if you will help me with this pronunciation, Persuitica. Persuitica. Thank Pers you. So Persuitica Learning yeah. Solutions. So three. Uh, so you that's a lot. It. That's a lot of. Um, that's a lot of different lives. That's a lot of different roles. That's a lot of experience. Um, can you just, I think the lens by which people would love to hear what all that boils down to is it all has something to do with the book that you've written. Yes. Yes. All of it is information. All of it is the aggregate of experiences, human beings and um, characters that you've met and spoke with and so forth. So how did all of that experience lead you to what you've written? Yeah. So essentially, um, you, you started with Persutica and let me explain to you, um, you won't be able to Google this name um, at all because I conceived it about seven years ago um, because my life is all about pursuit. I call myself as an experiential leader and I'm not proud of the fact that I'm a half MBA. I'm not at all proud about it. I mean, if given a chance, I would want to go back to the business school 
Um, it's a different story at a different time. Why did I drop off from one of the top 10 business schools in our country? But I'll share it with you offline. Um, so my life has all been about pursuing knowledge, pers being curious, reaching out to people and seeking help from them. So pursuit, curiosity and action. So what GE taught me, what uh, Raman Roy taught me, Infosys taught me is, is that you may be curious, but if you don't take action, um, you won't be able to realize your dreams. And, and uh, that's what has stayed so you know, close to my heart. And hence the name of the company, Pursutika. And Ka stands for action. So that's how. So, so fueling curiosity, igniting minds. That's my, my life credo. I want to fuel curiosity. I want to ignite people with new ideas, new thoughts through my conversations, through my readings, through my books, uh, experience sharing. So that's that's what defines me. Okay, super. And why don't we why don't we just sort of jump to this unusually titled book? Um, it's it's not common for somebody to title a book something like the elephant at the dinner table. Um, bring <laughs> us in, bring us in, bring us inside the joke. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, it's a very interesting story and it has shaped the lives of millions of people, not only in, in, in India, but across the globe. And I'll share the reasons why. So this was um, sometime in the mid nineties when India was still trying to uh, figure out, you know, the economy was about to open up our, um, the Indian Congress, the le leading party, political party, Rahul Gandhi, I'm so sorry, Rajiv Gandhi, Rahul is his son, late Rajiv Gandhi, uh, was a visionary yeah. and he was having spent a lot of time in the in the western world and being an airlines pilot he had a better exposure to what's happening across the globe and along with him he also had a great uh, finance minister dr manmohan singh and uh, several advisors and the future uh, leaders like uh, or legendary leaders like pv narsema rao uh, sam petroda one of the telecom brainchilds of our country and across the globe as well so um, so there were a lot of positive thinkers at that time who wanted to help open the economy and ibm was planning to return g was planning to return to india coca cola was planning to return to india and around this time, Raman Roy, who's uh, who's also known as the father of the Indian BPM, right now we call it as BPM. In earlier days, we used to call it as BPO, Business Process Outsourcing, which has now moved to Business Process Management. Mm -hmm. uh, and because we've really grown, evolved as a as a as an industry, and uh, so Raman was working with American Express, and he probably spent two decades with them, and. And in one of the boardroom meetings, he was trying to convince one of the senior leaders who had traveled down from um, US, UK, somewhere um, uh, from one of their senior, um, uh, one of their leading uh, uh, locations. And it was his probably a retirement, you know, pre-retirement visit trying to wrap up, you know, for all, all the good work he had done and saying thank you. So it was a thank you and goodbye kind of a visit. And Raman tried to pitch and say, hey, um, you know, why do we continue to receive uh, our, uh, you know, American Express credit card uh, invoices, the, the credit card bills uh, from Melbourne or Sydney? And uh, these are these are nice papers. They, they print them on and they post it to us. But, you know, guess what? India is, has so many graduates, so many postgraduates. I'm a chartered accountant. I have so many uh, commerce graduates in my company. We can do it at much lower price point and we can do a lot better job so uh, he was trying to sell white mail in in short yeah. and uh, so this gentleman had his team members also with him and they kind of laughed at this idea because to them india at that point of time was considered to be the land of uh, you know naked sadhus the land where tigers roam freely snake charmers and thanks to national geographic you know um, yeah. and and time magazine so 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 the mental picture about india was that so so the 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 sarcasm that came out of that conversation was that hey you don't even have roads you have you know your infrastructure is in bad shape and you are talking about you know moving work to india and um, so so the message was him that you know there are elephants on the street are your people going to you know come to office on elephants or camels 
So Raman uh, really didn't enjoy that conversation, especially the last part of the conversation. And he came out of the dinner table conversation. So he was, so from board meeting this, this conversation moved to a dinner table conversation in one of the fancy restaurants in Delhi. So Raman, you know, excused himself out of the meeting and uh, went to the lobby and picked up uh, a phone and called his team members to organize an elephant. He says, I need an elephant tomorrow morning at the office and well decorated with the Mahawad, the, the person who rides the elephant and with American Express flags and, and his team thought he's lost it. And, mm. um, and so, but he, he managed to, you know, quickly convince and he came back. And, uh, and then, um, and so, so some of his seniors and especially this, this sponsor kind of, he added uh, to the humor and he said, you know, you better get an elephant and, you know, you better do something like that. So to humor him, he, he kind of made, made these kind of decisions, but heart to heart, Raman really wanted to convey a, a message. So next day morning, when, when these gentlemen and the, his entourage, they were driving into the porch of the American Express uh, office, Raman was standing there with his team and, and, you know, nice, huge elephant with the Mahavat you know, wearing, uh, having a flag of American Express on it. And, and Raman gracefully opened the door of the car and he says, where do you want me to take you to? You know, I have the elephant with me. <laughs> 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 and uh, I think that's where um, Kevin, pe destiny of people like me was, uh, you, know, you know, carved up, you know, somebody mm. signed on our destiny. And this gentleman signed that, you know, kind of a deal saying, yes, we will send you work. To, to India and let's let's do something around it. So mm -hmm. so a combination of how the world economy was changing, the Indian economy was opening up. So there were a lot of green shoots that Raman had already envisioned as a true leader. And because of that, um, so a combination of these two, uh, that the um, infrastructure was opening up and there was a lot of government support and Raman was able to lobby, Raman was able to convince, at both end, at the American Express end, as well as at the government end, and established the first uh, American Express back office, which served the world. Mm -hmm. And because of the success of that, um, GE got interested and they were looking at, like I mentioned earlier, they were looking at returning to India. So they said, let's acquire this company. Let's acquire American Express. You know, GE believed, continues to believe in acquisitions and so someone, you know, probably a consultant would have told them that no, Amex is not for sale. So they said, let's then acquire the person who's made this uh, so successful. And they got um, Raman Roy to lead the, the first formal, formal back office of our country, G, GE Capital International Services. So Scott mm -hmm. Bayman was um, managing the GE Capital Indian venture and uh, Pramod Bhaseen was the, the second in line for, for Scott and Pramod and Raman collectively they they helped uh, shape this uh, company and and then uh, there was no, nothing you know looking back um, you know so right from white mail to healthcare insurance to medical mm. underwriting and and you know this it's this just grew and uh, so that's the story i mean uh, the elephant story and how it actually triggered uh, so many new opportunities. So IBM came, followed suit, and IBM uh, bought Daksh, uh, one another contact center, and um, and then Raman decided to set up his own company called Spectramind. So Sp uh, Wipro acquired Spectramind. Infosys said, no, we will not acquire any company. We'll grow organically. So they tied mm. up with Citibank, and collectively they grew. They created their own organic company called Progeon, which eventually became Infosys BPM. So, mm. so there were these three large players who who took the lead uh, from what Raman had achieved. And uh, that's how this industry got established in a big way from 2002 onwards. True uh, pioneer spirit, intrepid, um, visionary, bold pioneer spirit. Yeah. For that time. And we did not, I mean, now we look talk about startup world, unicorns, and so many other things. I didn't know that we, I was being a part of um, a startup environment, both at GE as well as at, at uh, Spectrumine, yeah. which later on became. Yeah. And Raman uh, allowed all of us and encouraged us to, he's a people's manager. He's a CEO with a heart. You know, normally mm -hmm. you find CEOs who, who, who only talk about numbers and they look at the world in a black and white. But Raman looks at the world with a, with a much wider landscape with a lot of colors 
So um, he, he encouraged us to, like my first job at Spectra Mine was to get business cards printed. And then the second job was to get telephone connections, uh, in, you know, organized. And yeah. uh, then, then I worked in creating sales pitches. I had a huge rub off traveling with Raman to various client, prospective clients, uh, along with his team, making a sales pitch. So it took me almost one and a half years, Kevin, before I actually got into my real work, what I was hired for. Yeah. So that's yeah. the beauty of running an organization like this. What's he, what's he like as a salesman? Oh, amazing. He's an amazing what's his style. Guy. Well, um, very passionate. Um, and he's very clear headed. He uses emotion when it requires to, and he uses his intellect when it, it is required. So he's a, in my, um, I also call myself as a holistic leader, WHL, W-H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C. I, I see a, um, an embody, embodiment of holistic leadership in him, a perfectly mm. balanced leader and uh, who, who very seamlessly switches from doing to being and from being to doing and believes mm. in nurturing network, believes in, you know, uh, pulling, like I mentioned, you know, a Pied Piper of Hamlin. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so he got people yeah. from Amex, he got people from his earlier organizations, from GE, uh, to just follow him. And um, I, I get goosebumps whenever I talk about Raman and um, I say hello to him and Mr. Narayan Murthy, Steve Jobs. Um, I say hi to them before I start my work because these are the guys <laughs> who really shaped uh, shaped me, shaped my organizations that I served and the country and the world at large. Yeah. Today, today yeah. GenPact is across the globe. Infosys is across the globe. You name any Indian startup, um, HCL or um, Tech Mahindra, all of them have global presence. WNS. Yeah. Zensar, everybody has a global presence. So they're creating jobs for millions of people across the globe. Yeah. 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 Just from the, just from the courage of those who are willing to go blaze a trail. Yes. Well said. Yeah. Absolutely. These were trailblazers and I'm so mm. blessed to have worked with them. Got a huge rub off from them. Yeah. Swami, for example, I've mentioned Swami's name several times in this book. Um, he was um, the telecom leader when I joined Infosys. And uh, then he grew up to become the CEO of the company. And uh, between Swami and Amitabh Chaudhary, who now is uh, working and leading HDFC, um, uh, Standard Life, and, 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 and between these two leaders, I got so much of uh, opportunities, so many opportunities. So in fact, um, and then... Um, Anant Radha Krishnan, Radha, we lovingly call him. I mean, all these leaders, um, you know, they, they walk the talk and talk the walk. And uh, I got four different roles to play in Infosys in my 10 years with them. Wipro mm -hmm. gave me three different roles to play. And, and being a part of the BPM industry, again, I evangelize BPM because the point is that by being in one company, you can represent so many clients. Nowhere on yeah. this planet you can... You can, unless and until you're working for a large, big four companies, uh, you know, uh, you get an opportunity to work from uh, clients across. And uh, yeah. so, so that's the beauty of uh, BPM and, and these evangelists, these trailblazers, as you rightly said. I've been listening to the way that you speak about them and uh, you refer to them as leaders. Um, you don't refer to them as managers. I'm very interested in the distinction between those two words because uh, it's very difficult for people to separate those two words out. And your book is not a book about management or about managers as, as I read it. Yes. But I mean, can, can I put to you that slightly thorny problem of maybe drawing a line from where management stops and leadership begins? Yeah. So, um, a very profound um, statement that you made earlier that you know between differentiating between the leaders and managers see um kevin um the unique um, contrast that i draw the dif distinction that i draw is that leaders um, uh, are visionaries they look beyond their current key responsibility areas they they always look at what can be done more they are always in a state of uh, quoting Reed Hoffman, the, the the gentleman who wrote Startup of You, um, the PayPal co-founder and the LinkedIn co-founder. I follow him. I, again, I revere um, uh, Mr. Hoffman. He says you always need to be in a state of permanent beta. 
and uh, never feel um, never consider yourself as a right and these uh, the leadership to me is that it's it's a constant journey it's a and you continue to stay curious and say how can i make how can i move my process to the next level and mm-hmm. not only they think about you know the process or the product or services they look at their people as abundant resources they look mm-hmm. at their people as complete they they believe that uh, their resources are creative self sufficient and abundant and hence mm-hmm. they they literally change their lens with which they look at their the team members and say hey um, let me only focus on this person's strengths so they they become enablers they their mm-hmm. job of a leader is to become an enabler they don't do their job of their teams but they are willing to roll up their sleeves whenever it's required but they give a vision to their team members they they enable them they provide them with the right ecosystem right resources mm-hmm. and also push them hard when it's required in yes. my book i've written about mr upendra singh one upen we lovingly call him who who literally pushed me and several people in a very professional yet very firm way right so these people they they so a lot of people use a word like ruthless no um i i maybe you have a better vocabulary around that um but then they they look like ruthless but they have your interest in mind more than anyone mm-hmm. else they want mm-hmm. to develop you they want to see you as future leaders so they believe in building a talent pipeline they believe in the concept of sharing and caring right on the cont- in the on the contrary the manager only focuses on his or her turf this is what mm-hmm. i was hired for these are my kras i have to shine in these kras if i have if i can if if it means i have to rub off people on the wrong side and or, or you know cause bruises to people so be it because i'm single mindedly very focused on what i need to achieve and 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 for some reasons because if if it has worked for them in the past it becomes a holy grail they say hey it has worked for me and they are not willing to change or you know sometimes they you know the managers also get you know managers as their their supervisors yeah so so they end up building a similar kind of a ecosystem where where they only promote the concept of management and they don't promote the concept or of, of leadership mm-hmm. and lastly kevin um you know i truly believe um and i've done a lot of research my, in fact my second and i'm working on two books simultaneously by the way so okay. my second book will be out sometime next year around the same time Great. next year and the third book which i'm writing is about holistic leadership and um uh, so so what i what i want to convey is that uh, one distinct difference between uh, a manager and a leader is a leader um doesn't wear two hats in that sense he he or she is the same um at home with with their personal relationships mm. the, with the relationship with their loved ones with their child with with their partner uh, so so what i mean by that kevin is that these leaders um they don't have a split personality yeah right so if if, if they are if if they love their partners and the kids back at work they demonstrate the same love and affection for their team members yeah if they nurture their relationships with their relatives with their loved ones over the weekend or during vacations they do the same thing of course the styles are different what i'm trying to say is the the core doesn't change the personality and the character of that person doesn't change Right. and that's what i've seen in raman that's what i've seen in swami that's what i've seen in gopal devanali i've seen in upendra singh anju talwar uh, sam swami nathan you i mean there are so many tiger tyagrajan um, who continues to lead uh, genpact um, anant radha krishnan i mean you name these leaders ganesh nataraj all of them they continue to exude a concept of holistic leadership and that's why you see very happy of i mean you you see tiger tyagrajan uh, you know posting pictures of his marathon in new york you know it's a nippy weather there's a nip in the air and he's clicking pictures um, or or ganesh natarajan celebrating his uh, daughter's achievements and and celebrating life i mean the reason why they demonstrate the wholesome part of them is that they demonstrate 
the authentic part of them. They are, yeah. and they they live and practice what they have been preaching. And of course, they are also equally thankful for the rub offs that they've got from their leaders. So and they're building a legacy. Long answer to your question. I I hope I'm able to. It's a that is a long answer question. I would have given you three days to answer it if we had the time because <laughs> this. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, we're doing um, we're doing a whole series around the concept of leadership, and we're doing it because a lot of our clients, for whom we build their uh, professional academies, their organizational academies, and and uh, professional learning. They cherish both of those roles. They need leaders and they need managers. They, they, they don't sort of look askance at, at managers. They need them uh, uh, as every organization does. And they need leaders too. But they really, uh, I think, get into a problem when they're expecting the one to be the other or vice versa. Yeah. And I really like your study. That's the way I think about your book is a study of leadership by taking a uh, prime case, a prime case, a prime case. It's like, hey, we may not be able to ever land at a perfect philosophical dictionary definition of this tricky word leader, but uh, you sure know it when you see it. <clears throat> yeah. And you've got all these lovely, um, these lovely cases, uh, yeah. different from one another, but uh, all just exemplary individuals. Yeah. Do you think they were born that way? Uh, see, um, to some extent, um, you know, your the family that you're born in, your your ecosystem, the environment in which you your upbringing happens, pl plays a very important role. Um, to some extent, you know those characteristics are there in you right from from the day zero uh, what is important is for for the seniors in the home in the home environment your parents the grandparents to spot that and and say hey looks like this person this boy or a girl um, is demonstrating certain goodness in certain areas so 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 and then they nurture they they provide the right environment for the child to grow in that in that space. Um, I'll give you classic examples of like Sania Mirza, one of our most celebrated, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the tennis star. Um, yeah. Her parents uh, discovered her talent right from childhood, right? Mm. And they, they gave up almost their life, their careers and their pursuits, their personal pursuits to, to help her ch their child to shine, right? Mm. Um, Similarly, a case of Sachin Tendulkar, I think his uh, coach where he used to play the, the, the cricket, cricket area, that garden that he used to go to. So his coach spotted his talent. So like I, yeah. I, I come back to, I wear the lens of abundance and, and so do certain parents, certain leaders. So, so pair, leaders, so let me put it this, like this, like I had mentioned earlier, a father is also a leader, a mother is also a leader, a brother is also yes. a leader, the mate, uh, the, the lady who's raising your child, um, who's your uh, additional help at home is also demonstrating leadership. The janitor at home is or in the airport is also demonstrating leadership to a certain extent. What we need to do is we need to simply identify and then provide them with the necessary tools and resources. Mm -hmm. And, and and allow them to be what they really want to be. So some children, you are able to identify their talents early. Some take few years, 10 years, 15 years. In my case, I'll, I'll give uh, my own example. Um, my economics teacher, I've mentioned in the book, Mr. Dharam Sevak, was a great role model for me. My English teacher and mathematics teacher, um, they, their intentions were noble, but they did not teach me the way I was hoping to be taught. Right. Um, so when Mr. Dharam Sevak used to wear suits and would, would walk very confidently and, and the way he introduced economics to us in, in the early 80s, I just fell in love with the subject. So, mm. so for me, he was an extension of being my parent. 
right? Even today, when I go back to Agra, my my you know my alumni meetings that we have in our in our convent school, um, Mr. Dharamsevak is a star attraction for those uh, dinner meetings. We we make him as a guest of honor, and that's uh, great. And so so what I'm trying to convey here is that leadership is. I believe everybody is a leader. You're born with certain talents. You know, quoting Tom Rath, the gentleman who promotes uh, Gallup's Strength Finder. You know, Don Clifton's legacy. He's taking it forward. I mean, he says that all of us are born with innate, innate talents. We just need to mm -hmm. shine those pearls, and we need mm -hmm. somebody to help us shine those pearls. It could be either your school teacher, your elder brother, your even your peer or your younger sibling. You can learn from everyone. Mm -hmm. So, so to wrap up this part of this question, I think people are born with talents. We just need to help them identify them. So hence we need coaches, hence we need mentors. I'm, I'm, I've dedicated mm -hmm. a chapter on finding a mentor. I've dedicated yes. a chapter on strength-based leadership. Yes. So you need uh, this kind of a support. Even President Obama today uh, has a mentor, has a coach. Everybody needs a coach. Mr. Narayan mm -hmm. Murthy, uh, uh, the founder of Infosys, uh, he has a coach. Everyone needs a coach and a mentor. And uh, they help you identify your talents or validate that, yes, these are your talents, mm -hmm. help you with the resources, guide you to the right uh, places. And that's what help you even clarify your vision, help you get a clarity of what you really want to do in life. Mm -hmm. Even today, I feel very, I mean, my, I met 300 leaders across five years and these were not questionnaire based uh, interviews. These were, you know, just like you and I are talking over Zoom or in person. And um, and even today, people are not clear about what they really want to do in life. Despite yeah. being in a leadership space for 10 years, 15 years. And yeah. It's a general statement. I'm not pointing fingers at everybody. Uh, a lot of them are clear. But, but I get surprised when people say, I really don't know if I'm in the right place. So you touched on two things there that I was uh, just itching to ask you. So I'm going to bookmark the one and then I'm going to ask you the other. And that way I make sure I at least get to those two. We got Please. a lot. We got a lot we'd, we'd like to ask you about. Um, so so the, the bookmark is around the word mentor. Yeah. And uh, again, we've got, you know, just like leader manager, there's some there's some tricky synonyms in there. And maybe we can yes. get to that apprenticeship versus mentorship versus followership management and leadership uh, but mentor is a powerful word that relationship is powerful i want to get back to it um, but before then there's a there's a point of process that i think people might like to understand as they um, buy your book on on kindle or maybe they buy the hard copy um, and so forth uh, who did you decide to talk to because that's a lot of conversations hmm. and once you get that time with them, how do you go about your line of questions yeah. um, in order to prepare for a book like the one that you've written here? So in my work, um, I, I get to read a lot, um, you know, ever since I moved into the learning space in the HR space. Um, uh, so I read a lot. I, I watch a lot of TED uh, talks. I uh, I'm a global speaker, so it, it it gives me an opportunity to travel across and meet a lot of luminaries and reach out to them. So through the net, and I believe in the power of networking. So I, I uh, I'm, I'm not saying it's a it's a great number, but having about eleven thousand followers on on LinkedIn is 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 a is is some data point that you will I'm sure appreciate. And uh, so so that helped me. Uh, funnel and identify who are the leaders I should be reaching out to. Right. I also uh, picked up some business schools um, because I'm I'm very worried about um, the younger lot who uh, and uh, who believe a lot in the power of uh, placements. You know, where are you going to get placed? Which organization? And uh, they give that a, a much more priority, a higher priority than looking at you know whether I'm going to be learning in this role or not. So I'm worried about that as well. So I chose um, almost 80% of them were leaders and 20% business management students. So for the business management students, I use the power of a questionnaire because if I'm addressing 80 people, I, I can't do 80 interviews that way. Uh, but with the business leaders, like I mentioned, that that was my research and 
my and of course my earlier leaders leaders whom i worked for or worked with so they they became a larger part of the uh, uh, the the uh, research methodology and i was also very conscious of the fact that you know this i want to convey a universal message so so i was very conscious so i chose to reach out to leaders in various parts of the world i wanted my research to be uh, right okay give a global context so friends from japan uh, friends in mexico uh, you know con- connections in south africa um uk us for of obviously and mm-hmm. a few canadians as well so i i kind of covered australia i covered new zealand so i covered a lot of geographies and the other thing that i did was i recruited a, a researcher she's from south africa her name is anik i i'm not a researcher i understand the research methodology and how to use it i understand the concept of primary and secondary data and categorization of data but i wanted to hire an expert uh, who mm-hmm. had a very unbiased view and she anik doesn't even know about india in terms of you know the bpo in- industry and hence she gave me a very from the raw data that i presented to her she gave me a very clear and an unbiased uh, perspective and uh, so that became the basis of my analysis and uh, yeah does that answer your question it does it does i th- i think uh one of the things that i have been keen to track and to share with the people who follow our interview series is the way in which a book comes about i think there's a temptation to believe that you just regularly make time for the starbucks um sit down tap away at the keyboard and then you know a structured tome comes out but um frequently there's a lot of uh there's a lot of data there's also a lot that ends up on the cutting room floor and just never ever can appear in the final production yeah and uh that in itself just tells an interesting story yeah. Um, so yeah, quite interesting that you actually hired somebody else in for the research. Yeah. In fact, Kevin, yeah. this is um, I've I've um, while while it's an ode to Raman, I, I mean, if you if you if you would have observed, I've um, I have celebrated uh, uh, the team that supported me over the last five years. I mean, um, Walter Cooter from US became my sounding board, and he used to push me and challenge me on uh, the usage of. Uh, titles i mean he helped me um, identify like for example uh, i had a title uh, for the chapter called strength based leadership he says no this it's so so vanilla based and uh, you know it doesn't really yeah. uh, so he pushed me hard to uh, to uh, finally find out uh, a title called shine on right yeah or or treating your clients as your co co creators yes. employees employees as a co creators i beg your pardon and um, so so i hired walter to support me and challenge me from those those levels then um, two ladies mrinalini sharma and sulbi did a lot of academic research for me though i love reading books but i can't read volumes of books and and or or pick up a book spend 3 days with it only to find out that it really doesn't serve my purpose so sulbi yes. and mrinalini read on my behalf uh, and would then come back with a whatsapp message saying amit if you miss reading this entire book then um, then shame on you right or or uh, we would just want you to read uh, page number 44 to 48 that's it yes. or, or we just want you to i'm sending you the audible summary of this book or a blinkist summary of this book so they helped curate uh, and and validated some of my experiences so this is amit you yes. this is your story guess what this there's an article in harvard business review that talks exactly on the same lines and so they helped me with that then my uh, my cohort kasia uh when i was studying um, uh, coactive coaching in singapore i traveled to singapore five times between 20, 2017 and 18 uh, to mm. do my coactive coaching and um, at the end of every session kasia would uh, draw beautiful doodles on the whiteboard summarizing yes. summarizing the session and that's what you see in the book as well Right. Yeah there's a lot of great animation in there. Right, a lot of great I mean the summary the book summary I'm I don't know if you can yeah all these so all of these uh, uh, were you able to see that? And and yes no it's just a gleaming white there we are now I've got now I've got a bit but Sorry. and some of that is on your website as well. Yeah 
So, yeah. so she, so I hired her professionally. I said, I'm going to pay you, but because I want the best from you. And it took, I mean, I was a pain in the neck for her for almost two years. And, I bet. and uh, we would, we would just <laughs> exchange ideas and then finalize the, so it's a, so the way I look at it is, it's just like a philharm, philharmonic orchestra. So I'm a music conductor and I, I took see. help. I took help of various musicians. We came together. So it's, it's a teamwork. And that's yes. what I promote in my leadership also. My entire leadership journey is about celebrating the success of others and leveraging goodness of others. And not to say that I'm complete in the sense I know everything. Yes. Right? So, um, so, so practice what you preach and preach what you practice. And that's why this book is um, has come up in a way and and some of them had a, had tears in their eyes they're saying you know why are you putting our names uh, on the book uh, i said you you deserve it i need to say yeah, you helped write it yeah you are super me up. yeah so that's what uh, leadership is also all about you know getting the best out and in today's world uh, kevin i'm sure you'll agree knowledge has become so democratized Mm. And and it's accessible across the globe. Uh, you know, MIT is offering you free resources, Coursera, LinkedIn Learning. You name it, you have access. So a child in Ethiopia, or or um, or um, in Kabul, as long as they have access to the internet, has similar access to the same research and the same content as as much as much as a child or a leader in San Francisco or in Manila mm. or in Peru or or in India. So nobody can stake yeah. claim saying this is my knowledge, this is my IP, you know, and you know those those. While I I respect IPs, I I want them to those things to be recognized. But to hoard information is no more. Um, you know those people will die, they'll perish. You know anyone who's hoarding information. So so good leaders also believe in sharing. And yeah, I mean, and that is look, that is the perfect springboard to this question about mentorship. So just i think a lot of people will assume that they that they understand what mentorship is but there's 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 something to it there's there's more more to it than just a cursory glance like oh that's nice uh, i ought to have a mentor or i ought to i ought to have a mentee i ought to do some mentoring um tell us where your thinking and your reflections have gone on the subject of mentorship particularly in the workplace yeah so i believe that the you know, the leader plays, wears multiple hats. So um, a lot of us, until I became a coach, I didn't really honestly understand the difference between the coaching and mentoring. So there is a distinction, uh, a very solid distinction. A coach um, um, asks you powerful questions and, um, and invokes answers within. Mm. Right? So he or she believes that you have the answers. So, so sometimes the leader has to play a coach, a role of a coach, has to wear a hat of a coach. And uh, sometimes he or she has to wear a, catch, a, a, a hat of a mentor. And a mentor is somebody who, who's, who's just like a tour guide, right? The, the guy or the lady with the flag, if you see them at the airport, you know, people are just following them and they're giving yeah. them the direction and saying, hey, now you need to stand in this queue. So mentors are kind of directive in nature. But they're very mm -hmm. polite, they're directive, and they give the necessary direction. And you look up to them because they are subject matter experts in their area. And um, so they have the authority to, to give you the right kind of a message mm -hmm. and the right kind of resources and tools. They are very, they are calm, they are uh, confident, yet they are also graceful. Uh, yeah. they, don't, they, don't, they don't have arrogance. Um, so those are the people I call them as mentors. And the same uh, characteristics you see in the coach. So, so we have to sp switch between coaching and mentoring. And uh, so for the doing bit of work, so the way I look at the world, I mean, again, I'm bringing back holistic because that's the topic which, you know, um, is, which, is, which has really fascinated me and I've done extensive research and continue to work on it is. So when you wear a holistic hat, you're looking at doing and being together, right? So, so when you are looking at doing things, you know, focusing on KRAs, focusing on uh, your achievements, focusing on your day's job, um, then, then you need a mentor to help you with that. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at the being part, saying, reflecting, how do I become uh, a leader, a visionary in the next five years? How do I manage my challenges with my, my better half? How do I manage challenges with my boss? How do I manage the toxic 
relationship, uh, the work environment that has surrounded me. Uh, there you need a coach. And that's where the coach focuses a lot on the being part. Mm-hmm. And a holistic leader constantly juggles and switches between doing and being, doing and being, right? So, yeah. so we need both. We need both a coach and a mentor. And right. if a mentor, for example, if a mentor does not have the coaching resources or the knowledge of coaching, then they are humble enough in saying, hey, I'm good for mentoring you. I'm good to tell you how to manage your credit card processes better or how to manage um, Kevin's uh, you know, idiosynchronies or Amit's idiosynchronies better. I can do all of that for you. However, uh, your question is a much more deeper question. You're looking at a long term. Help me. Let me help you find a right coach for you. Yes. Yeah. Right. So that's the distinction between these two. And it's important through your video, I, through this interaction, I want people to understand because I see people constantly confusing between the two. Right. So they really, really don't know many of them, including me. Like I said, 10, 15 years ago, I didn't know the difference between the two. And uh, yeah. so we need to really help. Um, and that's the job of a good leader. What are you doing um, uh, regularly in terms of coaching yourself? What what kind who, what kinds of folks do you coach? I coach a variety of uh, I mean across uh, the spectrum. So right from business management students to young leaders, uh, you know, small and medium size enterprise companies. I mean, these guys can't afford senior executives from Infosys or KPMG, uh, and um, so I I take it as a kind of my of social um, you know. Uh, uh, imperative for me to help uh, promote uh, small and medium enterprises i don't yep. say no to i don't say no to uh, calls from senior leaders however i get uh, and i do work with senior leadership uh, but i believe um, and that's what my research has also validated to quite an extent senior leaders like you and me have access to immense resources ourselves right right and um, it's 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 at the at the bottom of the pyramid of leadership where they need a lot of help and support, right? Mm. So I draw my fulfillment from young leaders and mid-level leaders. Right. So yeah. if given an opportunity, given a choice, I would like to focus in that area, but I don't say no to uh, senior leadership uh, uh, requirements as well. And I do a lot something... of learning journeys, Kevin. I'm sorry, I, I just want to... So I don't Please. believe in... I don't believe in one or two interactions or three interactions. Even my in my training programs, Kevin, I I feel more fulfilled and I'm able to deliver more value to my clients when they hire me to do a learning journey with them, when they hire me to do a coaching journey with them. Yeah. Yeah. Because I want to sincerely want to move the needle, help them see movement of the needle. I want to evoke yeah. transformation and it takes time. Yeah. So when you think about, um, th- there will be some people who are very interested in that, um, it, and maybe you can give that a little bit more precision. So a learning journey, are they talking about, you know, two weeks, two months, two years, 20 years? No. What? What's, g- uh, can you give that a bit of a, a bit of dimensions? Thanks. Uh, that's a, br- that's a brilliant and a very relevant question, uh, Kevin. I thank you for that. Um, so, so the, um, the learning journey is minimum three months, right? Mm-hmm. So um, that's where you know uh, you can you can certainly bring in some change in that person. You can demonstrate some change, and yeah. so I do work with um, individuals and with organizations with projects starting from three months to six months. And in fact, um, since last week, uh, me and my uh, mentor uh, and my collaborator, we've st- we've onboarded about. Um, about 100 uh, graduate engineer trainees and uh, we've been hired by this organization to to help uh, build leadership pipeline and uh, we call this as a program accelerate so within three years my goal is to have at least 60 to 65 percent of these people of these participants become frontline leaders and so it's so they've agreed to a three-year journey with me Right. So, so I'm going to meet them once in a quarter for two days. Um, I'm going to do a face-to-face conversations with them, followed by monthly um, two-hour uh, every month, two hours on Zoom, and and a lot of action learning projects. And um, also, I've created a mobile app-based uh, uh, learning ecosystem, which I call as the learning wall. So, even for in the book, you would have noticed I have a yes. QR code. So, there's a learning wall 
where uh, whatever new that I learn around the topics that I talk about or so in the fourth edition, so this is the anniversary edition and the fourth edition. So we have the QR code also. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. And I noticed on your website. So that's uh, organized. It's a pa Padlet configuration. It's a Padlet. Right? Yeah. So, 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 so it's a Padlet. It's not some like fixed infographic. You're actually no, changing no. it. It's dynamic. I, I, so yeah. I've not been able to change it every month as, as, as I would love to, but I'm working on it. I'm, I'm looking at hiring someone who can help me with that. Uh, the yeah. content will come from me, but this person, you know, curates it and, and structures it. But my message to my learners is that uh, just like I was mentioning earlier, you know, quoting Reed Hoffman, always stay in the state of permanent beta. So learning has to continue to be there throughout your learning journey. Yeah. And um, so, so Padlet resources. And um, so, so even if I learn something from a conference that I've attended recently. And, and if this conference spoke more, if I found a speaker who spoke very well on emotional intelligence, I'll go mm -hmm. up to him or her and take their permission and say, Hey, can I quote you? Or can I, you know, these pictures, can I put them on my learning wall? And, and that's what I do. And, and then what happens is if you are following me on the learning wall, if you've become a member, then uh, you get notified. Amit has put up a, a new, um, you know, resource for you and mm -hmm. you can access it 24 by seven. One more thing I wanted to talk about, uh, Kevin, is the concept please. of uh, learning half-life. Have you heard this concept before? Half-life no, learning? No, please share. So I got to know about this uh, through my association with um, ATD. You know, again, uh, one um, large, um, large-hearted organization, an organization that believes in sharing, uh, association of talent and development. It, they used to be called as American Society of Training and Development many years ago. So they rebranded themselves because now they are no more American. They are global. So they have a membership of 50,000 people like me across the globe. And I volunteer. I speak at their global forums um, I've also, and in, in India. And I also was on their program. Program advisory committee for two years um, in 2015 and 16. So they've taken me to Taipei, Japan, um, US. I've spoken several times, and in India, of course. So ATD taught me this concept of uh, half life, learning half life. So what? Uh, so one of the speakers, uh, the keynote speakers, uh, he mentioned that you know, whatever we learn, only half of it is relevant um, over a period of time. So the learning half life until about. 2013 was which was about 10 years which means if you graduated from MIT 10 years back only half of what you learned in 2013 was applicable was relevant right. okay it has shrunk considerably it has shrunk the learning half life yeah. has shrunk over these years yeah. any guesses any guesses Kevin where would it be today from 10 For, years? uh you you have to give me some some additional context so I can play the game are we talking MIT technical skill no, uh, so MIT technical skills, or that's one, or or even yeah. even your the way you you even your behavioral skills, the way the tools have changed. You know the way they yeah. used to teach situational leadership earlier vis-a-vis -vis now. How Ken Blanchard has woven and created a newer concept, or the way mm. they coactive also trained coactive coaches today. How they have changed themselves. They've also evolved in leadership uh, so, training. So programs. can I take a guess? I'm I'm going to guess it's nine months now. Yeah, your you know claps virtual claps to you. Uh, but is that right? It's almost it's very close. You know, about two years ago, um, it it shrunk to thirteen months, and right. I haven't honestly validated or checked the data, but I'm very very confident it would be around nine to ten months or less than a year for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how the world is changing, yeah. right? And hence the learning wall, and hence the need to promote Reed Hoffman's theory of leaving, leading and living a life of permanent beta. Yes, right. And, and yeah. hence, I believe a strongly on reverse mentoring. I, I have coaches who are half my age, right? So yeah. I have a coach who helped me last year with my LinkedIn uh, uh, formatting in the sense, my communication on LinkedIn. She's an influencer. Mm. So I reached out and I paid money to her and say, hey, I want to hire you for the next six months. Help me shape up my communication. I don't know much about LinkedIn communication. I've been on LinkedIn mm. for the last 10 years. Uh, so, um, so I believe in the power of reverse mentoring. I believe in the power of learning from your peers. Um, for the Taipei conference, I didn't know anything about Southeast Asia. That was my first time I was uh, going to speak in Southeast Asia. So I reached out to my network. Of the 14 CLOs I reached, four came back with some solid insights for me. 
and I wove their story into into my presentation. And at the end of my presentation in Taipei, I uh, celebrated their contribution. And when I came back, I sent them the deck. I said, hey, thank you. You were not physically present in that conference, but you were there in my thoughts and for the audience. Now, guess what it does to others? I mean, if I reach out to them next time, will they say no? Never. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's, uh, so that's, that's the power for of life now. Right. They've become friends for life. Some of them have even contributed for this book. <laughs> or, so, so, um, and some of them are contributing for my future um, research endeavors, the future books also. So that's what life Wait, when's is the about. When's the next book coming out, by the way? Oh, well, next year, uh, Kevin, um, I'm still um, trying to figure out how do I really position it in the sense, because this book has done so well. The first book, it's running fourth uh, impression right now. And uh, people Great. are... Good. And uh, people, so, so some people who received it as their New Year's gift, unfortunately, it's a human nature. We buy books, but we don't get to read them every time. So some of them have started opening the book and reading now. So I've started getting messages saying, hey, I picked up the book now and, and this is what it is. So the second book, so this one is the elephant at the dinner table. The second book is now let's eat the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> uh... So. So it's a it's a it's a it's a compilation of fifty short stories with beautiful illustrations. I've hired a student from um, um, uh, one of the most celebrated design school in our country called National Institute of Design. Her name mm -hmm. is Tanuja, and uh, she's right now interning in Microsoft. And she helped me create some beautiful illustrations around my story. So these are fifty stories of my life experiences. So one page of the story and the second page is about um, the, uh, sorry, the first page is the illustration and the second is my story and the reverse is the reflection and and down below I have resources for them. That's it. So it's just, it's just like a comic book, you know. So for, this is meant for people who can't even read 200 pages of the first book. Yeah. Which also so has if, illustrations. Yeah. So if, <laughs> if this takes two hours to read or three hours to read, my second book will be, uh, won't take more than one hour to, to yeah. finish. Well, just a just a good good regular length train ride. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it um, is. Amit, let's. Uh, one of the things we want to make sure we always do is direct people to find you the way that you would like them to find you. So, so maybe just say a couple of words. How should people track you down? Yeah, LinkedIn. That's that's okay. the. I, I spend at least half an hour on it and I encourage every one of you to all my viewers, uh, listeners to to spend time on LinkedIn. Um, it's it's a powerful, uh, powerful uh, professional. Uh, it's a fantastic platform. I've, I've hired resources uh, with LinkedIn. So if you want to cut down mm -hmm. on your recruitment costs of talent acquisition costs, this is a great tool. I've networked uh, with people. And again, it depends on how you nurture your network. I mean, it's a two way street. And don't get worried about likes or, or uh, you know, whether my post, you know. So just focus, nurture the network, reach out to people. So my LinkedIn profile has my contact details. Reach out to me. I regularly look at my messenger. And that's the best way to reach out to me. Yeah. Great. And uh, we, we were able to just grab the book off Amazon. So if people, yeah, yeah, yeah. for whatever reason, just want to go straight to the book, that's obviously the easy, uh, the easy yeah, way. Amazon to get it on is, Kindle. again... Yeah, claps to Amazon for distributing it and claps to, to Rupa distributors who have made this book. Um, uh, they've done a beautiful job uh, of, uh, you know, printing it so beautifully and make presenting it to the world. They've made sure that, you know, it's it's available across the globe. And yeah. uh, I thank them profusely for uh, whatever they have done Yeah, for the book. Well, speaking of thanks, um, Amit, that's just, it's just great to get some time on your docket to hear from you all that additional context and editorial for what, what was just like a, a great bit of writing. So thanks for that. Thanks for your time. Thank we'll you, We'll direct Kevin. people to, to find you. And let's speak again once that, uh, once that new tome is out in the market.